Salam everybody, this is Investor Shake back at it again with another video. Today's halal stock pick of the week is the Invesco PHLX Semiconductor ETF, ticker symbol SOXQ. Stock price is at $20.87. And I have covered this ETF a while back, so you can check out the video at the top. And in summary, this ETF tracks the PHLX Semiconductor Index, which makes it an index fund. And this ETF allows you to invest broadly in a variety of semiconductor companies such as Intel, TSM, Broadcom, etc. And I did mention that all the stocks that were in this ETF are Sharia compliant, which is good if you are someone that is looking to invest in halal ETFs. This does meet the criteria based on the holdings in that ETF. And the last time I covered this ETF, the stock price was around the $27 range. And since then, it has plummeted to $20 or $21 per share due to the bear market that we're witnessing, which is also hitting the technology stocks a lot harder, which is expected because with, with a lot of tech stocks being growth stocks, whenever there's an economic downturn in the stock market, growth stocks tend to be hit the hardest compared to blue chip companies and a lot of these companies that are in this ETF have been beaten down this year. As we see here, the year to date performance on the ETF is minus 35%. So it's been down 35% in 2022. And there's a lot of factors that are put in place, such as the, the sell-off that we're seeing in the stock market, as well as the semiconductor shortage, which I also want to cover briefly. But depending on how long the semiconductor shortage is, this may be a good opportunity to accumulate shares of this ETF if you're bullish on semiconductors in the long term. Because right now in the short term, you know, there's a lot of volatility going on in the market. So you never know if you're going to have a green day or a red day. So this wouldn't be a, a good ETF to do a, a short term swing trade if you're bullish on semiconductors in the next five to 10 years, this would be a good stock to accumulate during this bear market because I believe that once the market rebounds which could take some time of course I believe the semiconductors will also prevail in the long term so I have this article pulled up here when the chips are down how the semiconductor industry is dealing with a worldwide shortage some key points are the semiconductor ship shortages have been aggravated by the pandemic. Manufacturers are increasing chip production, but the shortfall won't be resolved immediately. Despite the current problems, the industry remains highly profitable. So that's one thing to note with regards to semiconductors. They are an essential part of a lot of the technology that's being manufactured, such as cars, electronics, TVs, computers cameras, phones, etc. They're practically everywhere and a lot of these companies that make these products are dependent on these semiconductor companies to provide the chips needed. You know, for example, the Apple iPhones use uh, chips that are designed in California at the Apple at Apple, but they are manufactured at TSM. So TSM actually makes the chips and give it to Apple to put in the iPhones. So a lot of these companies are dependent on a lot of these 
manuf uh, semiconductor manufacturing companies to provide the chips needed for these devices. And that's one good reason to invest in semiconductors even during this tech sell off. Now, with the chip shortage, there is less supply but more demand. With that, you know, it's simple economics. If there's a low supply, that means prices are going to go up. And with inflation going on right now, I'm not surprised that perhaps these semiconductor companies are going to need more money to produce these chips. Semiconductor companies have increased throughput, which will contribute to expected revenue growth of about 9% in 2021, up from the approximate 5% recorded in 2019, the last pre-pandemic year. Some governments are also upping their investment in semiconductor technology to lessen the impact of global supply chain disruptions. So another thing to take into the factor is the supply chain issues, which is also affecting the semiconductor companies. One great example is a lot of car manufacturers are delaying the delivery of their 2021-2022 models because they don't have the chips needed to operate the device. You know, a lot of these cars, these modern vehicles are reliant on computers to operate the vehicle. And this semiconductor shortage is not good for these uh, car companies because you know they can't bring these cars out for consumers who've already pre-ordered them or are planning on purchasing these vehicles. That's one issue to keep in mind. But the current ship shortage is unlikely to be resolved in the near future, partly because of the complexities of the semiconductor production process. Typical lead times can exceed four months for products that are already well established in a manufacturing line. Increasing capacity by moving a product to another manufacturing site usually adds another six months. Switching to a different manufacturer typically adds another year or more because the chip's design requires alterations to match the specific manufacturing processes of the new partner. And some chips can contain manufacturer-specific intellectual property that may require alterations or licensing. So there's a lot of steps that are being put in place for these movements to happen within semiconductor uh, companies. And this can really be time consuming because you know, some of these uh, manufacturers rely on these chips and if it's going to take that much if it's going to take a while for them to receive it because of these processes that's another concern to keep in mind that's a lot of the short-term issues that we're experiencing with semiconductors many companies that need semiconductors are already reconsidering their long-term procurement strategies some, for instance, may shift from a just-in-time ordering model, which helps minimize inventory costs, to one in which they off, which to in to one in which they order semiconductors far in advance. For their part, many semiconductor companies are adjusting their long-standing strategies to remain strong. The decisions that semiconductor companies make could have enormous economic significance, both for their industry and the economy as a whole, and the stakes have never been higher. The early 2000s profit margins were low at semiconductor companies with most generating returns below the cost of capital profitability improved during the past decade however spurred by soaring demand for microchips in most industries the rapid growth of the technology sector and increased cloud usage as well as ongoing consolidation in many sub-segments one consequence is that the semiconductor industry's profitability has improved significantly relative to other industries and this trend is expected to continue. So some, the next steps for a critical industry are capital markets have rewarded the semiconductors industry's surging profitability with companies in this sector delivering an annual average of 25% in total returns to shareholders from the end of 2015 to the end of 2019. Last year, shareholders saw even higher returns, averaging 50% per annum, as consumers and businesses upped their purchases of digital equipment of all kinds, partly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The question is whether the semiconductor industry can continue delivering such strong returns, especially as the pandemic continues to create uncertainties about demand patterns, supply chains, and other issues. Beyond increasing production capacity, 
semiconductor companies could consider several steps to continue their growth and meet customer demand. They could undertake more M&A deals and partnerships to gain an edge in profitable segments and expand their customer base. Semiconductor companies might also increase investments in innovative technologies that will help them develop leading edge chips for autonomous cars, the internet of things, artificial intelligence, and other areas with burgeoning growth. Above all, more agile strategies may be important during these uncertain times. Now, the short term is going to have a lot of uncertainty as how the companies are going to perform this year. But with the growing technology that we're experiencing, the Internet of Things, more cloud usage, that's all dependent on these semiconductor chips. And they play an essential part in this, in this evolution of technology that we're seeing. And yes, these companies have been profitable for the past five or ten years. But the real question is, can they continue that momentum even with this tech sell-off and other factors that are affecting the semiconductor companies in the short term, such as the increasing demand but low supply, supply chain issues, and you know the time-consuming processes of changing semiconductor companies. All these factors are playing a part in the decline of this ETF in the short term. But we'll have to give some time for these companies to resolve these issues in order for them to remain profitable for the long term. And with that, personally, I am accumulating shares of SOXQ. However, that is not financial advice. Please do your research regarding semiconductors before you financially involve yourself in this ETF. Like I said, the short term has a lot of uncertainty. But I believe the long term will be very bullish for semiconductors. This is Investor Sheikh checking out.